Hello YouTube modeling community. This is Rusty Roder uh, coming at you with uh, what we talked about before. Uh, and if you looked at the thumbnail, you'll know uh, I made a Tamu order. Uh, this I all paid for all this out of my own pocket. Uh, wasn't not sponsored by Tamu or anything, but uh, as you know, I, I do ball in on a budget. Uh, so you know, even with this diorama, it's really no different. Uh, how can I achieve what I'm looking for? You know, what I'm trying to create. Uh, all on a budget uh, and yeah I could have gone through you know Walther's and all these other amazing companies that are out there to buy you know greenery and shrub work and flowers and all that stuff uh, so I'm gonna be incorporating a lot of kind of aftermarket stuff with kind of scratch made stuff to achieve what I need on this diorama and any others that I I do in the future uh, give you an estimated cost uh this order was under under a hundred dollars uh and was it's probably between the the 70 and 80 dollar mark uh but i just got mass amounts so the buying in bulk theory kind of goes here uh from after looking at everything and <clears throat> going through it the quality is good good enough uh, and it's probably just as good as some others out there and the variety is the thing so I already kind of un unboxed it unpackaged it and I've put it in some drawers but we're gonna take a look at everything I got and uh, you know as always any questions you can just drop them down in the, the comments uh, I'll answer any, you know everything I can uh, if you want to send it via email my email is always down in the descriptions uh, you can get a hold of me there and I'll be glad to answer anything I can. Uh, so, we're going to shake you around here a little bit, turn you around. As you know, we got this thing from uh, a yard sale, which is really panned out. Uh, to look at the stuff. So, the first things we'll look at is, you know, this was like a dollar something. Uh, and it came smashed, which is no big deal because it goes right back into shape. But it's like a border... Of flowers now you can it's super sticky so you can cut this in little sections and place it here and there in the midst of a, you know a field of grass or around the building or in a flower box or whatever uh, but I, I peeled it back and it is super super sticky so it's really not going to require really any glue unless you just want to add it for you know safety reasons but this was like a dollar thirty something for this uh, about a four inch strip five inch strip by about an inch wide and the actual stuff here is probably about a half inch wide They could have put two strips of it down on one and really sweetened the deal But you know one's enough because I'm only gonna cut little sections out of this a place here and there Or maybe cut a strip, you know a couple inches long and and have it bordering something So we got that and then we got this uh, This is stuff you can make bushes out of shrubs you can see it's it's basically just real stuff. They just cut it down, dyed it, and packaged it. But this was like two dollars and thirty cents for this big box, which is about five inches wide by about seven inches long. Uh, see what's got the dimensions. That's in Chinese, so or Japanese. I can't read that, of course. But you get a close-up look of it. So it looks like it's got leaves or buds on it. So you can make some really nice little shrubs you can add stuff to it make it more you know realistic uh, but for a couple bucks you know this stuff is like packaged like the army painter I guess it's just called the model tuft which is probably the same company that makes the army painter uh, and it is because right there it is on there the army painter super glue so this is made by Army Painter. This company makes Army Painter stuff. Uh, this was like a dollar or two dollars and change a piece. I got kind of like, I don't know, fall looking tufts of grass. I got the greener ones. Uh, these are 77 millimeter tufts. Or there's 77 of them. I don't know. And they're all different sizes. So they go from big, to small, down to really small down here at the bottom and most of these will get used like on when I do my uh, what do you call it you know just little little miniatures like that for on their bases 
Uh, some of it will be used on dioramas, some will get used for that. So we got two of those, and then we got these packages. This is like what you'd sprinkle out on trees to add the foliage. Uh, we got dark, dark green and a lighter green. Uh, then we got these little cases. It's got flowers in them. It's like a red, dark pink, either one. Uh, they're little tufts. We got white. Uh, we got purple or lavender, whatever you want to call it. It says purple, so we got those. So we got these. These are like a dollar twenty a piece or something like that. Uh, and then we got these rows of hedges. So these, of course, can be cut into little sections too, to make like a little bush or whatever, whatever your heart's desire. And this was like a dollar something. And I got three rows, different kinds. Uh, and then I got these flowering shrubs, plants, all multicolored, different colors. And you can cut these down on length as well. But this was like a dollar something. There's, I mean, there's a crap ton of them. Big bunch of red, a big bunch of multicolor, a big bunch of pink, and another multicolored. So, I got those. We already had these tufts, dark, dark and light, green. Uh, that's it for that drawer. And then we got the big bulk of stuff here. These are little uh open it here pardon me for a minute so you can be able to see these are filled with little pre-cut they're two sides so you peel both sides off to get the, the super clean clear glass so i'll use these like in doors and windows and little hot rods that's just got small windows i can cut them down and use them and there's like 120 of them in each one of these things i got two of them uh they're about about three quarters of an inch wide by about an inch and a half long, somewhere in there, maybe two inches. So, I mean, there's, it's just filled with them. And I got two of these, and these were like a couple dollars. Uh, I got these battery packs. These are all for LEDs. They hold like a little three volt battery in, so I can power up stuff for the dioramas. Uh, there's the other, other glass, and then we got attachments for the uh, Dremel. Uh, it's got a little Velcro pad and all these little pads stick to the Velcro so I, I can cut sand. Basically these are all for sanding. So they're different grits. So when I go to sand stuff down I have all the different grits. Uh, just another tool in the arsenal. Then we got some, these are about dollhouse scale, probably 112 scale flower faces. Uh, we'll drill them out and we'll put plants in them and it'll just be a bigger vase so it, it'll fit the part it's not actually 125th scale but you know every things in 125th scale are all different sizes too whether it be a screw or uh you know a big huge flower vase so we got two of those those are like a dollar 20 for a set and they're colored uh we got like a natural stone look to it like a fire kiln pot uh, we also got these are really small uh, these would get probably put on a 120 scale diorama but as a small little light maybe across the front lighting up a sign or something like that these were like a dollar fifty so there's uh, I think one two three there's six of them in a pack so you know again different sizes then we got this this is a really big scale we probably won't use this lantern part but the bracket is what I wanted because it is metal and I can put a hanging basket off that uh, for the diorama uh, a large hanging basket in metal it'll fit the part also uh, so we got all that and then we got these these are basically what I'll be using on the vines flowers and the greenery part uh, scenario coarse grain pollen uh so this would be perfect for like trees or shrubs or just putting a few down into a flower box and we also got a red so this will work good on the vines the vining flowers uh the vine above the pergola 
and then we got yellow which you know in theory we could use this on the tree uh, as one of the viewers said you know make it a lemon tree it would kind of represent lemons or just yellow flowers either one and then we got a pink pink based one and me doing my DIY ones are very similar to this where I did that for a fraction I mean I got these were all a dollar thirty five a piece dollar thirty nine a piece but you get a buttload I mean that's enough to do three or four trees or more depending on how much you use on each tree and then we got a little darker pink so I can actually mix the two pinks together have light and dark pink on it so you know the combinations are limitless plus you know when you get stuff they come in these little cases these are good to put your parts in when you're doing a build keep them protected out of the element so to speak so I just set that in there for now until I decide where I'm going to put it uh, and then we get down here same way as these little containers I can keep stuff in then we got more of the mixture this is smaller so you can see it's got multi-green and red and they're on the phone on this video it looks pink but they're red I guess it's the way the light hits it uh, but they are a dark red uh, so we'll be incorporating that into and then we got the, the purple also the finer green out so we can mix it with the, the coarser green to make it look more real and then we got a multicolored so you could spread this out on the ground and it look like flowers a field of flowers or whatever uh, and then we've got the red to mix with the, the bigger red for the vines and then we've got some grass simulated turf basically is what it is so it's got like beiges and browns and greens and grays in it and then we got another type of dirt it's kind of like grays and browns uh, and we get into our grasses dark green grass and then a medium green so we can use this on the trees it's foliage and then we've got stuff we can make shrubs out of or you know represent the foliage on trees like you would buy a tree already with this stuff on it this is basically just like a wild moss and then they dye it and package it and you know it's very very soft and pliable but you know it represents you know the real tree and then we've got some that's a little lighter a little different shade of green there's a name for this stuff if you guys know throw it down in the comments i can't remember uh all for scenery though so we got you know this whole drawer full of stuff we got this whole drawer full of stuff and you know half a drawer here of stuff and then we got for the red building sorry for shaking you guys around the decorative light that we're going with uh, i went ahead and went that route with it uh the one that Ernest sent me we're going to use the pieces of it to like i said for a backup plan b to make the uh plant hangers turn you around a lot of those in the diorama just on all the buildings there's Faces that get mounted to the wall. There's hanging plants. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, that is uh, kind of what all this was ordered for. And then the piecework, the garage diorama, gas or nights, Ghostbusters, whatever I need there. So I'm covered for any of the future dioramas until I come up with some other crazy diorama idea. Uh, there is one military that I've been dwelling on for a long time. Uh, some of this would get used for that, but not 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 a lot. Uh, I'm thinking more jungle, jungle themed, uh, more like Vietnam War type scene, maybe World War II. I'm not for sure. Uh, so you know, it'd be more war torn, battle damaged type look to it. Anyway, it's not a whole lot of foliage anywhere. A little bit here and there. Uh, so I hope you like this. Uh, stuff I've seen a lot of other people do this to move stuff and compare prices and for 
what I spent on all that uh, was r about a quarter of what I would spend if I would went through name brands like the Army Painter, uh, Walters, uh, any of those scenery companies. Uh, they're all great and they got amazing products, but staying to who I am and balling on the budget, uh, getting something that looks exactly alike, similar to, and that will play the part for a fraction of the cost. So don't don't ever count to move out because they've got tons of stuff. And even though you're doing a 125th scale or 124th scale, uh, keep in mind, guys, that there's things that are bigger, you know, like a, I could I could print out 125th scale flower pots all day long, and they would be very tiny, kind of about the size of the paint buckets for the painters. Uh, but there's bigger flower pots in real life. There's bigger vases. There's bigger cups. There's you know, all all stuff for different sizes. You, and if you broke it down individual scale, there'd be a ton of different scales, but they fit the part in 125th scale. So same way as tires and wheels. Even though we're 125th scale, there's still a larger size and width and everything else in within that scale. So that's why I, I you can in a diorama you can kind of play around with quite a bit of stuff that's not true to that scale but fits fits the part. Uh, you don't want to go over overboard and get stuff that's way too big. Like that lantern would be way too big unless you incorporated it into like a monument or something like that. But the bracket, even though it's large. I can put a large hanging flower from it in a, in a planter and it fits the part. It just, it just incorporates very easily. Uh, I'll turn you around here one more time and show you where we're kind of at. Uh, it's not a lot. We got everything painted copper. I started some patina on this one here. I don't know if it'll show up in frame or not, but I'll show you the products. Uh, it's just the first coat. It's not dry all the way yet. Uh, the oxygen, I can't ever say the word, just the patina, let's call it that, it's easier to say, uh, of what copper would look like after it ages. And so, you know, we've got our first and second coat on everything here. Now it's starting to add the patina and then we can start assembling this and getting it put in place. Uh, it's a lot more fiddly than I thought. I broke quite a few pieces already, but by breaking a few, I figured out the best way to get them off the supports. Uh, and stuff like this, this is the worst. They break so easy. You gotta be very careful cutting off the supports. As you can see there, I went in clipped and it just, it broke. Uh, the best way to do it is to actually take a saw and cut it off the base and leave the supports on it and then clip the supports off one by one. Uh, it's a little more time consuming, but you can navigate getting these loose and having a nice little detail on there. These come off very easy. These came off easy. The tubes were easy. I did break one tube, but it's, it's fixable and there'll be patina around it. So it, it's not going to be a big deal. These inside corners will come off super easy or outside corners. Uh, the little boxes, they come off fairly easy. No big deal. Uh, these, you have to clip the support off first. <coughs> the support at the top right here and then clip it off at the bottom and then take the supports off individually like we would have to do with the gutter straps. Uh, but everything else came off easy. Sanded down pretty smooth. I want a rough look anyways. I don't want them super smooth. But you can see we got the tables and chairs, the base paint on them. The amplifier is painted. And simulated writing on the face plates and the knobs, the switches, uh, the little corner details on there. We got our skylight painted and the flashing simulated around the bottom of it. The windows blacked out. This goes on top of the red building, of course. Uh, our phone handles are painted. I painted two just in case I lose another one. I have one ready to go. Uh, this table and chairs, this will get like a tablecloth over them. So they're just like cheap, easy fold-up furniture that would sit out on the patio. Uh, so we've got those. we got our main frame of the door painted here. So you can, here's the column to the truck. Um, next next thing is to get the stained glass made and then get these glass panels made which we'll use what we got from Tamu. Get our door handle on there. Uh, we got to put another coat of paint on this first and then we can get this door installed and then we'll get the windows made and get them installed. So that's kind of where we're at uh, is focusing on windows and doors in, in this section here. 
getting those all done and installed uh, the gutter or the shutters and uh, the light fixtures the mailboxes getting all that detail that gets mounted to it we'll get this all painted and touched up uh, door handles of course get the stoops back on them and then uh, finish up our roofs get our gutters on downspouts and then we're, we'll be ready for any vines or plants that are attached to that to go on. Uh, Shorty uh, is still kind of on hold. It, it, it's ready to, to proceed. I'm just picking a day to where I can do it. I wanted to get all this stuff kind of prepped. Again, it's like the time sensitive stuff is going to be all the, the foliage, all the plants and the flowers and the people being put in place and the weathering. So it's like getting all that stuff ready to go. Uh, so again i hope you like it uh leave your comments down below uh there'll be another video coming out probably maybe the end of this week and i will be able to uh show you some more progress on where we're at with this uh and then uh i'm going to be happy putting this away for about a week week and a half and i can get shorty finished up to where it's just final assembly uh that way i know i've only got a day or two left in it uh so until then guys Thanks as always. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. I uh, look forward to your comments. Any questions, again, leave them down in the descriptions. Uh, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Mr. Rusty Rotor, I'm out.